Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools on today's episode. If you want to learn how to tile over an oven, yes, that's quite the transformation. We'll keep on watching. Let's get started. Now this is a restaurant grade wood burning oven and I know if you do not actually own one of these do not worry about it because this application can be used in a multitude of different types of scenarios with residential use. Now we're going to be encapsulating this entire oven with hardy board so we can have a surface to tile too. But first we have to install framework anywhere we can so we have a surface to actually mount the hardy board properly. Now when fastening studs to metal surfaces, I want to use a specific screw dedicated to that, which is why I'm using a self-drilling or self-tapping screw specifically for wood to metal surfaces. This also can be used in a number of different applications, but these are the best, especially when trying to fasten a wood product to a metal surface. For a little extra added support, I also added a bit of five minute epoxy. Now you don't have to do this, but why not give it a little extra support? Now as for the metal oven itself, I wanted to abrade the surface so we had proper adhesion once we apply the hardy board. Now I'm using a diamond wheel on my grinder just to abrade all the metal surfaces that I can so I have proper adhesion afterwards. Now I'm actually applying Duroc to this entire surface, which one, it's actually very easy to cut, and two, as long as you have some type of cement board, it should work just fine. Now prior to installing it onto the oven, I then take some high heat silicone and silicone all of the surfaces that I can. Now as I'm installing the Duroc, I make sure and add a couple shims at the bottom to ensure the fact that the Duroc is not resting solely on the tile floor. Now this just adds a bit of separation in case of movement, but let's be honest, if your tile subfloor is moving, then you have bigger issues in this. But in any case, that's what I did. And I fastened the Durarock with Durarock screws to the wood, but I then used my self-tapping metal screws to fasten the Durarock to the metal legs. Now one key fact is make sure you do not use those metal tapping screws for the actual oven because you do not want to actually penetrate your oven surface. That is damaging and I can see just going horribly wrong. Which is why I use the same high heat silicone that I used previously, but I also apply a two part high temperature epoxy. Now this epoxy is actually for concrete support anchors. If it's good enough for a concrete anchor, trust me, it's good enough for this type of system. Now the space underneath the oven is actually gonna be for wood storage and I'm building it out just so it looks clean and nice, but I'm not gonna be tiling this entire area because that would be just too much work for not enough gratification. I'm only gonna be tiling the floor surface. Now because we can't penetrate the oven, we're actually using these bar clamps to ensure that the boards are not gonna go anywhere and they adhere properly to the surface. And the beauty about bar clamps is that you can adjust the size and length as much as possible as long as you have black iron piping. Now after I let my silicone and epoxy dry, I then take the bar clamps off and then start accounting for my layout with the tile. Now the tile that I'm using is actually this beautiful travertine tile and there's two designs. One is more decorative and the other is just a cobalt blue and the blue is just absolutely gorgeous, especially if you like this type of style. Now because the top of the oven is more eye level, I want to ensure that I have a full tile at the very top and cut accordingly. Now I do account for shim thickness, so make sure you do not forget that one as well. Now if that's taken care of, I then tape all the seams of the Durarock to ensure that there's no crackage after I apply my thin set. Now there are a number of unusual bolts and hinges on the surface of the oven, but luckily with the Durarock being a half inch thick, I was able to account for that, and with cement tape and thin set, you're easily able to cover over the entire surface. Now comes time for thinset, and for this project we are using ProLite thinset that I picked up at Home Depot. Now before adding thinset to a bucket, I always add a couple quarts of water at the very bottom to ensure that they're not going to get really nasty clumps at the very bottom because no one really likes that, especially when trying to mix up thinset. I do also find that it's easier to actually mix thoroughly if you add water first to the bucket than your thinset. Just hopefully helpful note to self. Now you don't want your tile to be resting on the floor, so therefore I add a couple spacers at the bottom and then measure how tall my tile needs to be. 
Now as for all the cutting of the tile on this entire project, I used this rigid tabletop wet saw. Now this saw I fell in love with for the first time just because you're able to cut multiple pieces at the same length without having to measure every single piece. With a project like this, it's invaluable because you have so many pieces that are the exact same height or width. Plus with other table saws you really make a mess, but with this table saw, because all the water is generally enclosed, there really isn't much splatter off the machine, and as long as you put a tarp down, you can easily do this inside. And just like any other tool or material that I stand by on this channel, I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase it. Also, just remember that I am an Amazon and Home Depot affiliate, so any product that you purchase through my links helps the channel greatly. And you don't even need to buy the stuff that I have links to, a TV, a dog bed, as long as you click the link, it helps the channel greatly. Now the first row is obviously one of the most important because you want to make sure that's perfectly level so it makes it easier to install the remaining tile as you proceed up the wall. Now in all honesty and full disclosure, I didn't mud the tape prior to installing the tile because I was actually on a time crunch because this restaurant is trying to open and therefore I only had a matter of days to actually install this entire system. So if I had more time, I would suggest mudding the tape seam right there first prior to installing the tile. Now anywhere where there's an edge that you can actually see, I install a Schluter edge trim. Now you do this for two reasons. One, it gives your project a nice finished look, and two, it actually strengthens the edge because you don't want an open edge, which leads to a weakness in your tile system especially around where there's going to be a lot of moving parts, as in wood that's going to be placed in and out of this furnace, so therefore you want to make sure that you have a strengthened, clean, crisp edge all the way around. Now the one thing that greatly helped me through this entire process was actually a laser level. Yes, a laser level, which inevitably you might not think about needing, especially with this type of tiling project, but with this project, because I want to make sure and instill that there's a straight crisp line all the way down and all the way across, especially when you have very unique areas where I'm tiling, a laser level truly makes this work a lot easier to ensure that I have a perfect straight line all the way up and across. Now as I finish off one side and move on to the next, I then proceed to running the tiles all the way up to ensure that I have the proper spacing accordingly. Now in all honesty, I only did this on that first side because eventually I figured out that it was a lot easier just to run it from the bottom up and not just one row all the way up. Now through this entire installation process, I use two different types of shims. One is your standard 1 8 plastic shim. That's very easy to install, but the other one is more of a wedge shim. Now this wedge shim is perfect because it's actually very thin on one end and thicker on the other. Now this is a big deal and a lifesaver for me because the one thing I did not account for is the fact that this blue Talavera tile is not square, as in it is pretty close to square, but let's be honest, it is handmade Talavera tile and it is not perfectly square, which kind of gives it that nice rustic look, but makes things very difficult if you're trying to work your way up in a straight pattern. So the nice thing about that was that I was able to utilize those wedges and really gauge how high I wanted them to go gradually versus having a specific height that I had to hit every single time. Now that's for this type of tile, and again, I have a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase this tile. But if you like this look and you like the style, go for it. Just know that you will want to have those wedges. Trust me. Now also know because I did that type of alignment, I found it easier to back butter each tile and install it into place and then use my level to level out everything. It potentially might have taken a little bit longer to do it in this case, but it made my life easier and therefore this is how I did it on this project. Now for the inner walls of the wood storage, you're never going to see them, but just to give it somewhat of a finished look, I sprayed black high heat spray paint in there just to cover up all the walls. Then after that was dry, I laid the tile floor so the surface looked finished and beautiful. Now after you let the thin set fully dry, you then have this, and when I say I used a lot of 
shims and wedges. I use a lot of shims and wedges. I used a couple thousand of shims and wedges. So just keep that in mind and also know that you're going to take some time and actually remove all of these shims and wedges that you use. But trust me, I won't bore you with the whole process of doing that. We'll just move on to the next section. Yeah. I clean the surface with a sponge in clean water prior to grouting. Now I just want to make sure I have all the tidbits of thin set removed prior to doing so. And after that, it is time for grout. Now I'm using a sanded grout because we have at least an eighth of an inch grout line and therefore non-sanded grout would not be best in this type of application. Once you have your grout ready to go, go ahead and grab your trusty float and start floating the grout into all of the unique crevices of this entire project. Now you want to make sure you have proper floor protection underneath you because it just makes life a lot easier when it comes time to cleaning up. Just keep that in mind. Grouting is a time consuming process, especially when you're talking about this many grout lines. But as long as you're not working with an epoxy grout, you can work in very large sections. On each wall, I broke it up into half sections, so I was able to fully grout the top, wash it down with a sponge, and then start grouting the bottom section. As for washing the surface, I tend to have two buckets. One bucket is for the vast majority of removing all the excess thinset and washing the sponge in doing so multiple times, but my second bucket is more of my clean bucket. So at the very end, when I have the vast majority removed, I then go about using a clean water solution. Then once you have it fully washed off as much as possible and you let it dry, I then take a new sponge with a microfiber cloth on one side, which is that blue side, and then wipe off all the dried excess thinset. That way it's very easy to remove that final layer of thinset and you're able to move on to the next section. The grouting portion of this project might be a little bit tedious, but it really brings the project to life, especially with the fact that it's just a bright white and a nice contrast with the dark blue tile. And as you can see, the grout lines might not be perfectly even, but that's really what we were going for on this project because it was more that Talavera style, that rustic style, and therefore it doesn't have to be perfect, especially if the tiles are not perfectly square. I mean, come on, let's be honest. That's kind of crazy, right? Now once your grouting is fully completed, I then remove all the floor protection and then grab my sanded caulk. Now the sanded caulk is for the very bottom edge. Yes, we did not actually use our normal grout to fill in that floor to tile gap because if there's any failure on the grout portion, it's gonna be in that location because there potentially might be movement there or it might get kicked and so forth, which is why you want it to have some flexibility. And after that's complete, guess what? You are done. Now this project was truly an amazing little transformation and the fact that you're able to really utilize this entire process for a number of different type of oven applications really makes it versatile and therefore it's not just for this restaurant wood burning oven, it's for a lot of different types of oven applications for interior and exterior use. Plus, it's really fun to do a project where you know it's going to have a lot of eyes on it. And therefore, if you guys want to see it in person, I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to actually see it. It might be a little far, but man, that is one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. And there you have it, episode number 64 of BOT fully completed. And I must say that was one beautiful, sexy beast of a transformation. So hope you guys all enjoyed it. And please know and understand the fact that if you don't have a large wood burning oven, this is a multitude of applications for residential use, whether it's interior or exterior oven, same process, just different oven. But in any case, Thank you for your time. Please like the video. Please subscribe to this channel. And please check out my Instagram feed and my newly developed website at boitools.me. You can learn how to support the channel from there. 
Also, a big, huge thank you to all the subscribers out there. We're so close to hitting 60,000 subscribers. That's awesome. And I have actually stayed on point with my New Year's resolution of getting a video out every single week. And I have been able to do it. So I gotta love that. And hope you guys all love the consistent content every single week. In any case, I'm your time. Catch you next time. That beautiful moment when you realize that you put floor protection down, but you just forgot to put it on a slower speed, and then you just have to wipe up all of the excess thereafter. Nice work, Brent, but at least it was easy cleanup. I was just really excited to tile. Yep. Let's go with that.